Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you found what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to prepare for a cylinder head job. The video following this is specifically for the vehicles, uh, white block engines, Volvo 850s, S and V 70s that do not have VVT hubs. Those cars are usually from 1992 all the way through 1998, some of the 1999 models. If they don't have a VVT hub, this video is specifically for them. Now, in this video, I'm going to be uh, showing you how to prep for it, giving you my advice on what I recommend you do, and showing you some things that you need to understand. Then you need to click the link in the video below that actually shows the process of removing that cylinder head. But this video is important. You don't want to skip it. Again, this process applies to all of the 850s, uh, some of the s and 70s in the year I mentioned, and it will also help with uh, doing the cylinder head on the 960, just the white block engine in general. If a vehicle has a VVT hub, which means it is a 1999 or newer, it is critical that you do a couple of things to uh, protect yourself a little bit different. If you have uh, a VVT hubs, it's probably critical that you use the cam locking tools. You also want to keep all of the lifters in order if the uh, head has solid lifters. You do not want to mix those solid lifters up. The car will not start after you get them together because those are adjusted to the valves. They're specific lengths and you just can't mix them up. So don't make that mistake. I get that question a lot. I want to let you know that these engines are not timed top dead center. Don't start sending me messages about that. I don't want to hear it. You put the crank on the mark, and then you deal with the cams, getting them on the mark. These things are uh, timed by marks, not by these top dead center, all this other stuff. I don't want to hear it. There's uh, links in the comments, and you can search my channel for other videos that talk about timing. I'm not going to get into that here. I hate to have to say this. I'm going to say it one time. Uh... The parts that you use to rebuild your cylinder head are critical. I've done several of them. I don't know, maybe in excess of 10. I've had to redo a couple of them because I rebuilt the cylinder head with aftermarket valve stem seals. I no longer do that. It's too big of a job to have to redo in a year or two. I've had valve stem seals fail in a year. Not Volvo ones, but aftermarket ones. So here's the deal. Any part that takes longer than 30 minutes to replace from the time I walk up to the car to the time I do the job has to be OEM parts. The only aftermarket parts that I use on this vehicle cylinder head job is the head bolts, the exhaust manifold gaskets, and <clears throat> uh, there's one other thing that I've used that's aftermarket, but all of the rubber seals are definitely Volvo. The head gasket, Volvo. The valve stem seals, Volvo. The uh, cam seals, Volvo. Oh yeah, the only other thing that I use that's not Volvo is the anaerobic sealant, and I got a picture of that. So. Do not use aftermarket parts to redo your cylinder head. It's not going to be fun if you have to redo it. Now, the I don't take the throttle body off the intake manifold anymore, unless for some reason I have to. And the water jacket gasket that attaches the, um, the thermostat housing to the head that gasket is supposed to be double, so double that gasket. The gasket that goes on the back of the head, 
that is the only gasket that I glue on with a self gasket maker. I put a little bit of that blue gasket maker on there to glue that to the head or the pipe. I put the thing together because it's too hard to get that gasket in when the head's in place and that water jacket's against the head. So I do glue that one. Other than that, again, use all Volvo uh, important gaskets and seals and uh, you shouldn't have to redo this job. I don't reuse head bolts. I don't mind you taking a risk on that. I will not do it. If a head bolt breaks off in a block, it's going to be scary and a pain in the butt usually to get it out. So I always go back fresh head bolts, aftermarket bolts I haven't had any problems with, and uh, those things are under 50 bucks. That's just 50 bucks I'm going to have to spend. Just to let you know, this uh, video is the most economical way that I know how to get this job done. I'm not buying a whole bunch of special tools. I'm not removing stuff that don't need to be removed. I'm just doing the job, getting the job done, plain and simple. The more stuff you take off, the more chances you'll have to run into issues. You'll be breaking things. Things will break themselves. I just don't get into it. So don't remove stuff that don't need to be removed. So if you use someone else's instructions and they have you removing 900 things, contact them about getting those things reinstalled. I'm not going to probably be able to help you get that done. Also, I want to let you know, I usually only do what I have to do. So, if the things on the car are serviceable, it already has a good timing belt, only 20,000 miles on it. It already has a good water pump. It already has a good PCV system. I'm not redoing all of that stuff. No need to. Just deal with what you got to deal with. Removing and replacing the cylinder head. Now, really, you're only replacing or removing the cylinder head for three primary reasons. One, the car overheated. Every time they overheat, they normally blow the head, and you have to go get them resurfaced. Number two, it burned the valve. Number three, the valve stems are so old it's leaking oil, and you need to pull the cylinder head to do that job. In my opinion, you should never do a valve uh, stem seal job with the head installed because these cars have a history of burning valves, and if you don't take this head off, pull those valves out, get that carbon off of them, and relap those valves, you're probably going to burn a valve in short order. It just doesn't make sense. So pull ahead for those three reasons. Again, I just want to encourage you not to do a whole bunch of stuff that's not necessary. I do not pull the water tank. I can get it out of the way, no need to pull it. I do not pull the fan and radiator. There's no need to pull that stuff to get this uh, cylinder head off. I do not pull the exhaust manifold and turbo. I can pull the head up without getting that stuff done. So you want to go ahead, get the battery out of the way, get the air box out of the way, pull this turbo tube, pull your throttle body linkage, set that aside, pull your intake manifold, set that aside, pull your dust cover off, disconnect your vacuum lines from the head, pull your cam cover off. When you pull the cam cover off, you want to be extra, extra careful that you make sure you don't drop the cams in the head and you don't pull the cover off in a way that will damage the cover or the head. The cover is soft aluminum. The head is soft aluminum. The cams are really, really solid steel. So on this side, you have journals inside the cylinder head and the cam cover. When you pull this cover off, you want to lift it in a way that you either leave the cams on the head or you pull the cams up with the cover. You pull this side up, you can leave that side down, you can pivot it that way, but don't let these cams fall down onto the head. And don't pull the back of the cover up and bend these journals and break those off. So you wanna make sure you lift the cams up, 
either with the cover or leave them on the head. Be careful you don't damage the cam cover. It's pretty important to make sure that you have the engine in time before you uh, pull this stuff loose. Again, if the belt and stuff's fine, you don't have to replace it, just pull it loose. With the crank on the mark with the oil pump. Once you get the belt off, you get all the bolts and stuff out of the cover. You could turn these cams in the head. That's what I normally do. It normally breaks that cover loose for me. The pressure of the lifters pressing on the uh, cams when I'm turning them, it breaks the cover loose. Be careful to take the cover loose with the uh, lift points. Again, don't let the uh, cams damage the head. You could pull them up with the cover or leave them down in the head. After you have the cams out, you can uh, make sure you keep the lifters in order if you like. If the lifters are solid, it's imperative to keep them in order. If they're hydraulic lifters, you could just take them out, throw them in a bucket of oil. They don't have to be in order. No big deal. But you need to know which ones. There's a link in the comment section to help you tell the difference between hydraulic and solid lifters. After you get the lifters out, the exhaust manifold bolts loose, the water jacket uh, thing loose, you take the head bolts off, you lift the head out of the car and get it serviced. If you are doing a cylinder head job that has VVT hubs, some people say they can't get the cover off without pulling the VVTs. Some people say they can. I haven't done it on uh, too many cars. The car I did it on was a 99 Volvo. I was able to get the cover off without uh, pulling the VVT at any rate. If you're dealing with VVTs and you have to pull them, make sure you get the rear cam locking tool. That tool will hold those cams in the proper position so that you can get those VVT hubs off and on properly. There's a video linked in the comment section about that. One thing that I do when taking this stuff apart, I set things in the back of the car on some kind of protective thing like cardboard or something to keep things in order. Now. I have spliced together clips in the process that shows a couple different variants of uh, these cylinder heads dealing with these uh, Volvo 850s. There is a link in the comments that goes to a written tutorial that shows everything step by step there. You could go to that website, print that stuff out, and use that to help you. Check the comments. If you have questions, you can ask prior to or after. That's up to you. When you pull the bolts out of the exhaust manifold that bolt the exhaust manifold to the head, normally the studs come out of the head and the nuts are stuck to the uh, studs. You use a tool like this, lock this down on the stud, pull the nut off kind of important thing. If you don't, you'll be fighting with that thing. I'm going to put a video clip together sometime soon to show you how to use this tool. Now here's a few other things that you may want to do and you need to know when dealing with uh, doing a cylinder head. One, if your timing parts are in excess of 50,000 miles, you may want to remove those things that are worn there. Number two, if you're planning on doing all your coolant hoses and that junction back there where your heater hoses go through the firewall, if that thing is more than 10 years old, it's probably going to break when you remove those heater hoses. So go ahead and get one of those firewall junctions and remove that as well. Three, if the PCV system hasn't been done to your knowledge, plan on doing that, purchase those parts and you get that stuff done while the head is apart, you'll be ahead of the game, save you a little bit of time. There you have it. I hope this prep video helped you out. Click the link below in the comment section to watch the actual process of getting removed. And if you have any questions, post them below. Me or someone else will be glad to answer those for you. If you feel that this information was useful, 
please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.